So let's talk about the safeguard configuration in a little bit more detail. One thing we want to mention is about users and users configuration in terms of the permissions you can assign to users in the safeguard configuration uh, dialogues. So let's first connect to the appliances and now for the administrative task you need the Windows based client. So fire up your safeguard client and log into your appliance. And log in with the local administrator, with the built-in administrator that is called admin. And the password may be the standard one. If you haven't changed anything and you don't know the admin password, have a look into the manual. It's written there. And by the way, if you want to bypass the pop-up of the browser when you log into the Windows-based client, simply hold down Shift key when you're logging in or when you're clicking the button to log into the appliance. That will skip this entry. So. The next thing, uh, we just click on the administrative tools and then we head up to the users entry. And then you're going to see all the users that are currently defined in your system. I played a little bit around here in my demo environment. So there are a couple of other users already present. If you log in the first time, you only see the bootstrap administrator. That's the built in admin user. So it may look different in your environment. So to create a new user, simply click on plus. Just leave it as local, give it some kind of username and then click on next. Leave this as it is, give it a nice password, whatever. If you met, meet the complexity rule or the password rules, you see this nice little check mark on the end. So this is it and then click on next, leave the time zone as it is. And now we are on the permissions tab. So this is the view to the inbuilt role-based access control model in Safeguard. There are a couple of permissions now listed here. So the first one is authorizer. With that permission assigned to, to a user, this user can assign permissions to other users as well. So don't assign it to yourself. The other one is the user. User in this case is the user administrator, not to confuse with the standard, standard user in Safeguard. So this is the user administrator that allows you or gives you permission to create other users. And the other one is help desk that allows you to unlock and, and set passwords and other stuff. You have a, the appliance administrator. So you want to have some kind of configuration tasks associated with that. And maybe you can update the appliances with the appropriate patch if it's available. You have the operations permission that allows you to reboot and monitor the appliance. And of course, one of the most common use things here is the auditor permission that allows a, a user to have read only access to each and everything. So it is just somebody who can have a look into your box and see what's going on there, but is not capable to change anything. The other one is the asset one. This is about to create and modify assets and petitions inside Safeguard. And last but not least, you have a security policy permission that allows you to modify the access uh, request policies and entitlements. So this, in fact, uh, allows you to configure the security policy implemented. And if you want to play around in your demo environment, it is usually the standard approach to create a complete new user and simply click on select all to assign it all permissions. Of course, this is not recommended for productive environment. So let's have a look on the configuration of permissions uh, inside the uh, Safeguard for Privileged Sessions, SPS. To do this, please log into the uh, Safeguard for Privileged Session via your web browser using your administrative account. You have specifies when you installed the software or the appliance. And in my case, this is admin. And now I'm logged in with the admin user. And if you click on the AAA, please click in this menu access control. And now you're going to see a very long list on various permissions that can be granted inside the product. And all these permissions that are listed here in the middle, like in the object row, uh, are more or less related to entries on the menu uh, on the left side. So, for instance, if you have policies, you have policies view and policies write permissions, and you have a policies in the uh, entry in the menu bar on the left as well. So this is really caused in a one-to-one -one relationship. And if you now want to have more permissions specially defined for a couple of users, 
you have to click on this plus sign here and then you have to add a group name of a group that contains your user accounts you're logging into the SPS with. This is a different construct as in the SPP, but this is group based and this can be local groups and it can be on the other side uh, directory based groups if you have specified linkage to some kind of directory service like AD or an LDAP system. So in this case, if you just want to have maybe a group called Safeguard and you want to assign it something, just click on the Edit button here and then you're going to see all these long tree of possible menu items where you can have access. And then you maybe can click here for maybe RDP control. You can enable the channel policies if you want, if maybe something, some sub, sub entries, and then you can select all the permissions you want and assign it to that group. And this will be applied to all members of that group coming from local or remote storage. And that's how this model works in SPS.